Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can nail your settings on your Wagner Flexio sprayer. Let's roll the intro and get to work. Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and recently I finished my first furniture flip where I used my Wagner 590 Flexio sprayer to apply the finish and through that project I found and I feel like there is a gap in the information out there in relation to the settings of the Flexio sprayer. When you get your Flexio sprayer everyone tells you just play around the settings until you think it's right and then go ahead and apply the finish but in reality there are three things that you can change on your Flexio sprayer and as a beginner it's hard to know which one needs to be changed and when so hopefully today we are going to solve some of those problems I am going to use my Flexio 590 but I'm pretty sure this information will apply to any of the Wagner Flexio sprayers the first thing I'm going to do is load up my canister with paint and then we can start testing out the settings I've got paint in my canister and it is ready to go. In relation to the setup, this tube here is what sucks up the paint. So if you're painting in an upward motion, you want it turned back towards the sprayer so that it can pick up the paint. If you're painting in a downward motion, you want it turned around to the front so that it can pick it up. If you're painting level, I would still leave it facing the front. Now my 590 comes with two different sprays. It comes with the detailed sprayer and it comes with the larger sprayer. The way Wagner describe it is that this is for interior paints and this is for finishes. I don't think that's a great way to explain it. The way that I would think about it is if you're trying to cover a really big area, I would go with the bigger guy. And if you're doing small detailed things like small fences or furniture, I would go with the detailed nozzle. That's a better way in my opinion of how to think about it. We're gonna start with this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and get him attached. All right, let's get this attached to the motor. Head over to the spray tent and then we can start to talk about settings. Now, of course, you want to protect the areas that you don't want to get paint on. So I've got the Wagner Shelter set up. This is the largest in the range. It's also the first time I am using it. It took me a little bit to understand how it goes together, but once I worked it out, it does go up fairly quickly. It's really designed to be used outdoors, but I prefer to film indoors, which is why I've got it in the workshop. Now, with the sprayer, the three things that you can change, you can change how much your paint is watered down, your material flow, and your power settings. And logically, this is how I think about it. I'm not a scientist, but this is what makes sense to me. Paint is like particles. If you water them down, the particles become smaller. Your power settings is made up of air, which is creating force to push out those particles, and your material flow is dictating how many particles are gonna get sent out into the air. I hope that makes sense, but that is how I think about it. It. Now to start today's test, we're going to start off with what Wagner recommends. The paint I am using is good old house interior low sheen paint. I have not watered it down because they advertise that you don't need to water it down. So that's how we're going to start. And then we will go from there. Now with interior paint, they suggest that the power settings is anywhere between five and eight. So we'll start at five and I have got my material flow set down in low. So it shouldn't be putting out too much paint but let's jump in and have a go and see what happens. Let's do one test on the cardboard and then we can have a chat about what's happened and what I think we need to change. Now with these sprayers, you can rotate the nozzle here in relation to which way you are spraying. The tabs will indicate which way you should be moving the sprayer. So I've got it set up in a horizontal motion because that's the way I'm going to be spraying. All right, as you can see by this first example, not a lot of paint has come out of the paint sprayer and it's quite splotchy across the paint line. The first thing I'm gonna do is water the paint down by five to 10% because I don't think it can hurt and it's the easiest thing to adjust. I'm gonna leave every other setting as it is because I wanna adjust one setting at a time so that we can see what the differences are. So let's head over to the workbench, water it down by five to 10%, come back and have another go. Now, one of the great things about the Wagner sprayers is this yellow stirring stick because it automatically has notches down the side to help you dilute your paint by 10%. So all you need to do is put it in and whatever notch it comes up to, fill with water to the next notch and then you've diluted your paint by 10%. So we can see now that paint is running a whole lot more freely. So those part paint particles have now become smaller which means we can push more through the sprayer. All right, 
right, so what we can see by watering the paint down by 10%, it does put a little bit more paint on to the cardboard, but I still don't think we've got enough power pushing it out. So I'm gonna turn the power from five all the way to max, have another go and see what happens. All right, now we're getting somewhere. By turning the air power up to max, what that has achieved is a nice amount of paint being pushed out consistently across the cardboard. We are still in the narrow pattern and that's because my material setting is set to low. I think if you're using the detailed nozzle, you're probably painting something small or furniture and you're probably going to want a narrow pattern. Now I am still getting some overspray top to bottom and to be honest with you, I don't know what is normal amount of overspray. That is part of the reason why I'm doing the experiment today. Now when you read the instruction booklet that Wagner sends out with the sprayers, they suggest with the interior paint to have the material flow somewhere between medium and high. So what I'm going to do is turn it up to around about medium, switch out the cardboard, have another go and see if that makes any improvements. To adjust your interior flow, you're gonna turn this knob here in the middle. And the way that I think about it is if you turn it in a clockwise direction, you're gaining in time, so you're increasing your flow. If you turn it anti-clockwise, you're going backwards in time, you're reducing the material flow. Now it's really hard with these sprayers to know exactly when you are at low, medium, and high. There's no particular way to be able to know. So what I do is I turn it all the way clockwise so that that is a hard stopping point. I know I'm at my max amount of flow, and then I turn it back a couple of rotations and I say that is somewhere to be medium. There's no particular science but that is how I do it. I've got mine set to medium, my power settings are set to max. Let's go and change out the cardboard and have another go. So by increasing my material flow from low to somewhere between medium and high, I can definitely tell I have increased the width of my spray pattern. I'm still getting the same amount of overspray top to bottom. So really the material flow comes down to how much you're trying to cover at once. Now what I'm interested to test and trial is if I water my paint down a little bit more than 10%, does that make any difference to my overspray? Just so that I really know what I should expect as a quote unquote normal amount of overspray. So let's go back to the workbench, water down a little more than 10%, get in a new fresh piece of cardboard and have another go. Now I'm nailing the settings. By watering my paint down by 15%, what this has achieved is still nice even coverage across the cardboard, but it has reduced my overspray to be a fine mist. Whereas when I was at the 10%, the overspray was much more noticeable. Now with the fine mist, as I'm spraying my workpiece and creating that 30 to 50% overlap, that won't be an issue and I'll get nice even coverage across my workpiece. I still left my air power settings at max and I changed my material settings to be somewhere between low and medium because when I'm using that detailed nozzle. This is somewhere in the spray pattern that I'm looking for. So from this point, I would be very happy to move onto my workpiece and start spraying. To recap and help you set up your Flexio sprayer so that you can be successful spraying your next project, this is the order of operation or the way that I would be doing things. If I'm spraying paint, I'm gonna automatically dilute the paint by 10% as a starting point. If I'm spraying a stain or a clear finish where they're already quite watery, I'm not gonna dilute them straight away. From there, I'm gonna use the Wagner instruction booklet and set up the sprayer with their recommended settings. On some scrap wood or cardboard, I'm gonna test the sprayer and I'm gonna dial in my material flow to get the width of spray pattern that I'm looking for depending on the project that I'm spraying. Once I've dialed in that setting, I'm gonna play around with my Air Max and I'm gonna use the coverage and the overspray as a guideline as to whether or not I've got the right setting. I'm looking for that fine mist of overspray with nice coverage. If I max out my air power, that tells me that I then need to water down my paint a little more, probably having to go up to somewhere around about that 15% mark. Once I have completely nailed it and I've got that fine mist with nice coverage, I know I am good to head to my project and start spraying. Now I hope you have found this video helpful and if you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.